G'day, I'm Tim Thompson. You might remember a very popular video recently with Bill and Tony from Bat Fencing showing us some workarounds for not having to auger holes when driving concrete posts with their drop hammer. There's more than one way to skin a cat. We've just left Bill and Tony to complete their contract fencing operation and come across the valley to spend a bit of time with Steve. Now Steve's got a couple of different ideas about driving concrete posts and they work for him. He's using a percussion driver as opposed to a drop hammer and he's using a percussion driver that's been set up especially for concrete posts. So let's go and have a look at him driving a post and then ask him about a few of his top tips that he's found make driving posts all that easier. Steve, g'day mate, how are you? Good mate. So Steve, can you share with us some of your tips for using a percussion driver? Because you have a very different approach to Bill and Tony that we just had a look at across the valley. Right, well I, I always drill a pilot hole. Yep. Even in soft ground, it just lets you know what's down there. Um, sometimes if you hit a bit of a foreign object in the ground, these will just twist a bit. Yep. On the way down and that puts you, because the holes are already in them. It so your pilot hole lets you know what's yes, going on beforehand. Yes, lets you know what's going on beforehand. Yep. And it's important to point out that this being a newer driver, it has a, has a spirit level mounted on the yes, driver. Yes, there's and two spirit levels here. Um, there's forward and back hydraulic controls. You yep. just level it up in a matter of a couple of seconds. So for you using an auger on this new machine, you, you're pretty confident that you can get it straight in the ground. Yep. So that's probably why your preference for an auger. What size auger are you using with these posts? Uh, 90 mil auger for the standard size fence posts and I've got a 150 mil auger for the um, strainers. Now your percussion driver, um, it's got a pretty special little head on it. Yeah. You had that made for you by Munro? Yes, Munro put that together for me. Okay. Yes. Yep. And I noticed all you've got to do is just line it up with the post initially. Well, it just, it'll, it just sits in, a, in the ring. One of their standard rings for the, yep. which is their normal guide for their, to hold their posts in position when, the, when they're driving. Yep. It just drops straight in one of the, one of the rings. And that lets you move the mast around with all of your Well, you can have the controls. tractor at any angle to the post. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you can actually yeah. get the post straight yeah. in the hole. Yep. Yeah. I do prefer to, 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 it's a, probably a little bit slower, but I do all my own fencing. I'm not a contractor, so everything, yes. I like to have it nice and straight. But we we do back in from the side and we drive each post back in from the side. It's purely for the fact you can look through the holes and you can have all your holes lined up down the line. So when you pull the wire through, everything goes through nice and easy. So you're using your holes as a gun sight to line yep. up your line that, up your fence. Yes, that's correct. And so that's why you don't want the tractor in the way tractor of that in, no. and you back in. No. Takes a little bit more time, but as you said, you're not a contractor, so you're not being paid by the minute. No, takes a little bit more time, but, but in good going, uh, if I've got the wife driving the tractor, yep. we do about 20 an hour and we'll have no more than maybe a half an inch to three quarters of an inch sort of variation yeah. in, the, in between the tops of the posts in the line. So having the new driver has given you a fair bit of flexibility and yes. having the head especially made by Munro to fit these posts is critical mm -hmm. Yes, um, because it avoids any and all damage to the post as it's being driven in. Yes, the condition of the rubber in the cap is crucial too. If you're going fine, like I went fine for, for years, yep. all of a sudden I had a few hiccups and it was just the fact it that the, just rub the, rubber. the rubber didn't actually look that much different, Yep, but it does deteriorate after a while and you've got to... So how often would you be changing over your rubber? Oh. I don't know, once every 500 posts. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's a fair while. Yeah, that's a fair while. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Even if it takes you a couple of hours longer to drive your posts, um, when you get to the end of the line, your posts are all straight and all the holes are already bored. If you're driving wooden posts and you're driving straight down the line and just banging them in one after another, you've got two blokes to walk up the line, slide them up, straighten them up, ram them with the crowbar, and then mark all the holes and then get at them on your chainsaw and... <laughs> which is a, not a good job, and bore all your holes. So I think just taking that little bit extra time and being that much further ahead at the end with a nice neat job. And I find 
these with this machine anyway so much easier to drive because every post is exactly the same the wooden posts these days they're bent they've got limbs cut off the back of them they're twisted every post goes in different this is how i approach flat and hilly country uh, i always use seven foot posts on the flat where you get a bit of water flow uh, i always use six foot posts up the hill because you're likely to hit a rock and that's far enough in the ground uh, i always use eight foot strainers down the flat for the same reason and i always use three meter rails on the top of the box stays because you'll find in soft ground they will push that little post into the ground a bit and everything tends to lean over and I've learnt that through experience. Oh, and, and sometimes it, you do find an easy, an easy way out. Okay, sometimes you've got to do a bit of a work around and uh, we had a road fence with a, and we needed to follow the road around the corner as everybody knows as soon as you strain that fence up if your stay isn't supported it'll pull straight over. So we use a little bit of extra bolt and uh, some natural terrain and we had a, a little, little bit easier way out. Always look at your terrain and sometimes it can give you a hand. All right, Steve, so this is the very first concrete corner post that you put in. That's correct. And you've learned a bit through this. Yes, yes, I have, Tim, yeah. This is quite swampy ground. You've, it's, you've... it's soft ground and, and uh, in a flood there's very fast flowing water through here. And you've just been through the biggest flood that your family's ever recorded in this area? Yeah. The grandfather bought the property in 1948. Yep. Uh, this is two metres, at least two metres higher than any flood we've seen since then. So since 1948, the flood that we had this year is two metres higher and it came up basically to your back door. Yeah. You were lucky it didn't come right up into the house. It was very close, very close to the house, yeah. And you've had some large stumps move around as a result. You yes. Found, you found some things on the property you never knew you had. Never knew we had. Lost a few water troughs and <laughs> other things. And your neighbour was kind enough to return To bring the water, water trough back, yeah. Oh, isn't that good? Yeah. Isn't that great neighbourly neighbourly work? Country hospitality. Yeah, exactly. So this, this post here you originally put in by hand and you'd yes. only put it in about 600 or so. Because of the nature of the amount of water in the ground I just couldn't dig the hole, physically dig the hole deep enough. This is an yep. 8 foot strainer and you can see I'm, a, I'm sort of maybe that far under 6 foot. So yeah, so it's, it's probably about 4 foot in the ground I'd, now. I'd say she's probably in the ground as far as she's out. <laughs> so she it moved but it didn't wash away in the No, it let, it let right over, the little posts went. Yep. yep, how many little posts did you lose as a result? Um, just back to the other side of the causeway this direction and then probably about 18 panel the other way but i'm sure that they only they only went because the strainer let them down right yep yeah, so what I'm, did you do to fix this how, how have you gone about flood proofing this well this I, put, end I put the um strainer probably another at least another foot into the ground because you've got a tractor driver now i've got a tractor driver now yes as yep. we've all seen yeah and i put three meter top rails on as opposed to two meters which i had before Yes. And I made sure that the little posts on the end were, were driven down snugly too because again, yep. before I had the driver I had the same problem, I had to put them in by hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So driving the posts is a big deal because you get them in far enough. Yes. And, and, and the you geometry that. of that top rail is so yeah. critical. So many yes. people underestimate the geometry of this. I see a lot of concrete posts using short top rails. They really should use a longer top rail, shouldn't they, Sue? They should do. Yeah, they should do. I was, I was told from a very young age that You've got a short strainer, you'll just pull the post straight over the top of it. Yep, yep, yep. that works like a car wheel, yep. doesn't it? Yep, yep. All right, so lots of learning from this. How do you reckon it's going to perform in coming floods? What do you reckon? Well, we'll see. It had been under a couple of times. Uh, the fence was put in probably around 2016. Yep. So it had the 2017 flood over it, that was a pretty good flood, and it had the 2020 flood over it, and that was a pretty good flood. Yes. Uh, it, they, neither of those worried it, it was only this last one, and it was because of the build up. We got two floods close together. Yep. Um, yep. The first flood was huge, uh, and the second flood was very vicious. We had 400 mil of rain in Alstonville overnight, yep. and it come down through here a lot more severe than, than in the big flood. Yeah, right. You didn't lose any stock, I hope. Didn't lose any stock, and it didn't get in the house, but... Well, that's good. Yes, other than that, yeah. yeah. So, thankfully, we just a few fence posts to replace, mm -hmm. and a bit of learning. Yep. Um, and no other real dire consequences for you. No, no we'll, we'll see how we go now. Yeah. yeah, no, very good, mate. Thank you very much for taking the time to show us what you've learned about using concrete posts in assemblies and working in flooded areas. I really appreciate it. Sir. Not a problem. Thanks, okay. mate. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Guys, if you like that kind of content and you find that useful, please don't forget, hit the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, and there's plenty more content like this and more on timthompson.ag. See you next week. 
Another tip from Steve is always run a bit of poly pipe around the bottom of your strainer wire when you're dealing with concrete posts because it gives it that slip and allows you to get it up nice and tight with the strainers and it doesn't bind or cut into the post. 